long enough that it will stitch my sides together. Okay, so that's my side stitch yarn. If I, if some reason it hasn't, then um, I'll just cut a little bit more. And I started a foundation row. I've chained 40, added one for a turn chain, and then a row of half double crochets. I chain one in turn, and then I do half double crochets, back loop only, and that's what's done for the rest of the pattern. And this this one has 54 rows. Now I uh, I do stitch mark mine, and I have some plastic ones for every two that I do. I put a stitch marker, and then on my tenth one, I put a nice little metal uh, stitch mark. And here's the example of what I was using. So for every two rows, I put one of these, then on my 10th row, I'll add one of these metal ones. That way I'm not losing count of how many rows I'm on. Excuse me. And that just helps me out a lot. Now, I have more of these somewhere, and I did this mainly for the small one because I wanted to make sure I was... Or the medium one. I did it on the medium one. But anyway, these came from Hobby Lobby. And these, I'm not sure where I got these. I think these came in a um, crochet hook pack that I, I bought from my Amazon. And they had these in there. So I have other, I do have more uh, markers like that. And I do want to, I want to try to make some stitch markers. Because I've never done that. Um, I have some of these little claw clips so I think that'd be kind of neat to try to make some I have a kit that you can make glass beads and I have moved that around with me for years and I thought that might be interesting to do and make some um, stitch markers with that to be seen I don't know okay go back to this my bottom pumpkin I crocheted 40 plus 1 for my foundation row one row a half double crochet, then everything's half double crochet, back loop only, 54 rows. So that's my bottom one. Now this is my medium one. I am using this more brown. Of course, you can see that uh, this one is going to be just slightly smaller. This foundation crocheted uh, 30 plus 1, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to be doing, the, the, all these are the same stitch. So you want to repeat that. But this one has 42 rows. And then the small pumpkin we have is 20. So 40, 30, 20. And of course the same thing. But I have I have 30 rows. Now we're going to kind of work with my small one here. And you're going to see that I have more than plenty, you know, tail here for the side. Um, might have over-exaggerated that one. And the same thing for this. Now, when I stop, like this is the top, my last row that I did. Um, when I knot it, when I do secure it, I leave a big tail. Because that's what's going to go through this side of the pumpkin and if I make it long enough I can usually I bring it through the middle which I'm going to show you this what I'm doing when we do the closure for this one but um so I give myself a good tail this is kind of you have to make sure you don't catch this while you're crocheting of course this is at the final but this is going to be enough for this side and I'll bring it through after I stuff it and it will be enough for this side too and then I pull and I pull tight enough to kind of squish it a little bit. But we'll see that here in a minute. If you're interested, hang out and we'll do that at the end. So just to kind of give an idea, and we're just going to start. I do want to make a small cream colored pumpkin. Let me bring you down a little bit closer. All right. Hopefully that's good. Are we got you straight or have you looking at crooked? No, oh, no. Okay. So remember I said the small one is uh, 20. One, two, three. Whoops. Sorry, guys. Two. 
10. Okay, so I got my I have my 20. So just a reminder, half double crochet is yarn over, go through, you have three loops, and you bring it through all three. And that's what we're going to do all the way across, is doing that half double crochet. And this is easy because you're not changing. Um, you do want to try to do a tight stitch because we are going to be stuffing these. And um, it just makes it a little bit neater. Some people put like a, a cloth inside when before they stuff them. But normally I just stuff mine. So I try to make sure I have a tight knit. So let me finish this row. Okay, so I just do a chain one. Whoops, how is that? There we go. Tighten that back up. I chain one. And I'm going to turn and doing the back loop, I yarn over and you see the V's. This V here, I am just picking up the back one. Now, when if you've never done this before, it could be a little bit slow going. But once you get the hang of it and it grows, it becomes easier. And that's how we're going to do. We're going to just get that back loop. Now, if you really want it to have ridges all the way around, um, I will suggest doing a double crochet, doing one row of front loop, then one row of back loop, and you will get this very rigid looking um, pumpkin. And, of course, you can use these in any combinations. This is the only stitch we're going to do this one with. So I'm going to finish that. Okay, I'm going to do my last one. Now my last one kind of goes around the corner a little bit, but you want to make sure you don't miss that one. You want to do your last double crochet. I chain one, and then I add my little stitch marker. And I know at this stitch marker, I have two rows. And then I know I have to climb it up 30 on this one. Now, I probably should have went down one hook on this yarn. If you want it really tight, I might have to do that. Um, sometimes if your yarn is stretchy and it seems a little a little more holy and you got your tension's not tight like this one, you can um, go down one more half a hook or maybe a full hook. hook and get, of course, that tighter look there. And you can see at this one, I mean, this is done with a, you know, weight, four weight, five millimeter hook, so which is this one. It's the same kind of yarn, but you can see the difference in the, the way it looks. So I might have to, I might have to, re, I might redo that one to make it a little bit tighter to actually use, but it makes a nice thick pattern here. So that's all you're going to do. This is just my little way of keeping count because I have lost count and um, miscounted um, on my pattern. So it could be, you know, might seem a little bit difficult. Like what, what row am I on? That's just my little helpful hint. But that's where it's going to go from there. Now I'm going to finish this later, but we're going to go ahead and stuff a pumpkin. All right, you can do this with a plastic or metal hook. I've done it with both. My preference is a metal one. And I don't want one too big, but it's a little long for the small one. Let me see if we can get a short one here. No, I'm gonna use this one. And I bought, these are, the hooks came from various places. I probably bought them from Hobby Lobby, but also the little holder that I have for it is a Hobby Lobby Yarnology. That's their brand. Um, it said curved needle hooks, and I do have some curved needle hooks. Um, not Just not in that one. I've just bought several of them, so I've used them. So, um, this is, I mean, to me, it looks, it's the same on both sides. So, I look at it and see which one is neater. I have one that has a knot where like the yarn was put together 
and I would put that on the inside. Both of these look fairly same. I'm going to call this the inside. So I'm going to put my insides together. And hopefully when I do this, I'm going to find that all the edges match. And if you know, you know. Because if it gets just slightly off, tension gets different, you can have a very different look. So all I'm doing is i um, going to put these together, try to match my stitches up. I'm going to go through here on my first stitch and this is where you can decide to do whatever way you like to. You can just go back loop, back loop. And that's what I'm going to do. As far as I mean, this kind of gives it a neat look on the other side. You want to make sure you're matching your stitches. Let me see if I'm doing it right. Let me. And that's what it's going to be. Of course, mine's not real tight right now, so once I tighten it up more, that'll be, bring it together. So you can see, hopefully those meet properly. So that's all I'm going to do now. It's just bring this side together and then when I get to the other end we'll stitch up one side do a little stuffing and progress to the tops and bottoms of it so there we go okay so there is what that looks like hopefully it, you know you can see no gap sometimes you can see my stitches even if I try really hard not to. So I'm going to turn this around and see the other side. And there we go. So it is closer together. So I, if you really look, you could tell that space isn't there. Now, I actually have probably enough to um, go around. And that can happen, especially on the small one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the rest of mine. And start gathering the top here for the secure the bottom so I am just going into these little bumps on top of the you can see here and I'm gonna I'm gonna go through so many of them and then pull through And I am kind of just picking up whatever I can of these stitches as I go. I'm kind of weaving in and out. Some people just go through. I've seen, you know, do closures just with like certain, just a few of the threads. I kind of like going through more. I think it gives a tighter um, pull at the end. So... We're well, just going to weave that through, and that's all you're going to do all the way around. Now, if your yarn will be enough, but because remember, we're going to be tightening, so you're going to have that pull. You can always pull this a little bit tighter if you're unsure it won't go around all the way. So, I'm going to go ahead and finish this, and I'll be right back. Okay, I didn't even realize I had my TV going when I did that last little bit. And I apologize. That was Murder She Wrote, if you didn't recognize it. And as you can tell, I remembered this time and paused it. So when I came to the end, this is where I started. I did one more little pass through to make sure I have a complete circle. So all I'm going to be doing now is pulling it tight. And try to get it as tight as you can. We can we're going to be able to adjust this later too. And I'll show you how I do that. I'm trying to get it as tight as I can. Now I will, if I can get it to where I want it. I know it's like pulling. And it's like I'm always so afraid my yarn's going to break. But now I'm going to take this and go across. See I'm right here. So I'm just going to go across from it. Try to get in here as close as I can. Not as graceful as maybe as it can be. And I'm just going to pull it again. 
and we're just going to do a little cross back and forth with this I'm trying not to get my hand in the way until I feel like I've got it somewhat secure and it won't get loose and then I'll just kind of do a few more all I'm doing is trying to make this not come back apart when we're you know when once we get done so I'm going to do it one more time and then I'm going to put my thread in the middle we're just going to go through the bottom and I'm just going to pull it up now I have more than enough tail to do whatever I need so I am going to I want this to stay up here so this is what we're going to end up having all right now if you've watched my channel you know I'm big about repurposing and I'm sorry for the noise from the bag but um Goodwill used to have their stuffed toys 99 cents now every so often how to get this done okay every so often I got my little fluff Every so often you can find the really huge ones and um, for that price. Nowadays you kind of, you know, they don't have it that way. But um, all I did was open them up and save the fluff. And I have, oh, let me see. This has done, well, it's done all the pumpkins I've shared. So far, it's did the three tiered. It's did my other, you know, it's did about seven, eight pumpkins, and I still have plenty. So I'm going to try to figure out how much I have to do. Now, sometimes I'm not great at this because I'll misjudge. Let me kind of, I'm trying to get this in the middle. Okay, misjudge because it looks full, but and when we're going to close it, you can kind of do that and kind of see. Um, so, I've, or you can overstuff it. Because I don't line my pumpkins, which I thought about trying. I just have never done that. Um, and I do want to try and see how that looks. Okay. So, I think that's where I'm going to be. So, we're going to take my very long yarn. And I'm actually going to trim it because I know I don't need all that. And I love it when I can't find stuff. Hold on. My scissors walk away. Okay, so I like to doing this without the stuffing, so I kind of measured that, but what I'm going to do is the same thing. We are just going to, I'm going to backtrack and get this with me so I can close that up a little bit easier, and then I'm just going to go around the same way as I did the other side. And then we'll be back to close this up and put my stuffing back in now that we know how much we need. And I'll see you here in just a little bit. Okay, so I have gone around my other side. So now we're just going to restuff this. And I'm not going to, hey, you saw me do it once. You guys don't want to see that again, but that's all I'm doing right now. Okay, so I have all my stuffing back in there. And now I have seen uh, people save their scrap yarn for filler. Um which is a good idea. I just don't usually have uh, a way to, you know, kind of just have that. I, ha I don't, I haven't had that. So I, I guess I need to maybe find a way to do it. Now, um, remember this is the bottom of it. And we, I like my squid. I mean, you want your pumpkin round, then ta-da, we're round. But because mine are stacking, I want them kind of, I'm going to do this one more time. It's not wanting to make it a little bit better to close, maybe. I want my little squishy. They're squished down. So I'm going to pull this as tight as I can. Now this one's okay to have a little opening because it is my top pumpkin. Okay? So just kind of... I'd look and see if it's where you want it. Because if you have any... Kind of desire or think it needs more you want to do this before you really knot it up <laughs> so i'm just kind of moving my little filler out by squishing it around i do have a little bit of an opening and again i'm not horribly upset having a small one because i'm going to put a stem 
and I am going to tie this again and see see how that made it a little bit more squishy I don't want like flat flat but that will do it and then I will weave in my yarn it's a little harder when it's tight like that but just kind of secure the, secure this a little bit more oh so that's all I'm gonna do and then we'll cut it and to be honest about it once I do that I will probably I got it a little knotted don't I there we go I'm gonna pull my needle out I'm gonna tie this oh one more time for security reasons there we go and there's our pumpkin <clears throat> now this is my top pumpkin now all you have to do is if you have enough opening you can shove this all back in there or you can trim it I'm just going to trim mine it's a little bit faster for this so there's that there's my pumpkin now I am going to be adding a stem so let me find the bright side okay so this is the bag those stem wood stems floral garden and this is this is a, just a dollar tree um, of course if you have limbs down or branches outside you know just that works too so here's a small one do kind of help me make the decision here um, and then a lot of these are a little bit longer now if it's long but that's the style you want if you leave another reason to leave your opening up a little bit is you can put it down in there you know a little bit of stuff it in there that's too long so I don't want to do that I really I think I like my little stubby one to be honest about it so let me think here and then if you have a way I have um, you can get a cutter a tool you know a certain tool and make it sharper but again if um, this is left a little bit open but I cross stitched that so bad much I might have to play around with it okay so I think I'm going to go with the little skinny brown one I'm going to try to work this in a little bit more because I think that'll be cute because I do want to put leaves on the outside and I'm just thinking if I wasn't going to put leaves definitely this one I was just leaving them alone because I think that's a, maybe a cuter a better size for that so I'll try to figure out what my favorite direction is but I like the small one um, let me see I have a small fat one but that just looks out of place so I'm either gonna work this one it's a little bit shorter than another one so we're gonna I'm gonna work this one in here and um, put it to where I like it then we'll glue it in there we go I've got it worked in I'm just kind of twisted it around till it kind of went through the middle there bring it to the size you want now that's staying in pretty good so you could get away with not having to glue it in my pumpkin's lopsided guys what did I do here we go as I said I like this because you can kind of squish it around to where you like it and make sure it's the shape you want or fluff it a little bit more to make it more round but anyway so there's my top pumpkin um, I can crochet some leaves I got some darker um, uh, darker darker what am I talking about darker yarn green that would work or I'm trying to see if I have some more um, leaves um, I have a few leaves let me see if I can see what that would look like there. Uh, we're going to pull things apart. There's just greenery. So, let's see. I mean, I could take that out and put this in. No, I don't like that. So, I probably will do some crocheting. Or I could do the uh, some twine and make little swirly things, which I do want to do. But anyway, there's the top pumpkin. There's all that just to have you guys listen to me mull around to see how I'm going to finish it off. But we can put, I've got little real pretty flowers 
that you can put around it. You can put leaves, fake leaves. You can use uh, crocheted leaves. I'm going to make little spirally things when I get to find the right color. I want I don't I want it a little bit darker than this, but that would be pretty. And only thing the way I do that. Let me show you how. That's just a single crochet. If you want to do the little spiral spiral effects on the um your pumpkin. Let me just see if we can whip this up real quick. I want to make a get me some foundation row here and we'll get back okay so I did all I did was chain I think I did 20 here and then you could use single crochet but where normally this is something you don't want to see your project do this can be a cute addition to your pumpkin and you can just secure it on there or leave put them on there before you put your stem and then you have your little curly to cue I want to do it out of um uh, twine because I like that look with that or you can just put a twine bow around it all right that was long enough I'm sorry to make it this long but I hope it was helpful I hope you got the, the dimensions of the um, doing one um, and it helps you make your own project and I know pumpkin season might be over for some people but it's something I like around I have my have fall colors in my house so the pumpkins are suited and they kind of stay out all year so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was helpful. And I will be seeing you later. And I'll show the finished project when I get it done. Maybe on my um, on a post or a short. So that's it for now. Bye for guys. I hope you're having a have the rest of your day goes well.